Dinosaurs continue to fascinate scientists and the public alike, offering a glimpse into distant worlds millions of years ago. Filled with prehistoric giants like Triceratops, a three-horned plant-eating dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous period, and the Taurosaurid, another horned ceratopsid that shared similar characteristics and lived in the same region and time period. Wait, or are they the same species? Well, it's hard to say, but it has been postulated in a 2010 paper that Triceratops may actually be a juvenile form of Taurosaurus. Or is it Taurosaurus or mature Triceratops? I'm not quite sure. Whichever way you want to say it, there is a real possibility that these two Ceratopsians may just be the same species. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Today we will explore this very question as we dive into the anatomy, fossil records, and behavior of Triceratops and Taurosaurus digging deep into the facts to see what they unearth, as we ride through one of paleontology's most fascinating debates. Let's start off with Triceratops. The Triceratops, or three horned face, is among the most well-known dinosaurs, rivaling even Tyrannosaurus rex in its popularity. It lived approximately 68 to 66 million years ago, during the Maastrichtian stage of the late Cretaceous period just before the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. Triceratops belonged to the Ceratopsidae family, a group of herbivorous dinosaurs known for their amazing facial horns and frills, which also includes Albertoceratops, Centrosaurus, Cenoceratops, and of course, Taurosaurus. They measured up to 30 feet in length and stood around 10 feet tall. They also weighed in up to 11 tons, or about as much as a school bus. Its skull alone was up to 8 feet, 2.5 meters in length. It had a large, solid, bony frill extending from the back of its skull, framing its face. And three, or trifacial horns, one on the snout, and two long curved horns above the eyes. Triceratops had a quadrupedal stance, with front limbs shorter than the hind limbs, a robust, muscular build, with a short tail. As a herbivore, Triceratops used its beak to snip off leaves and branches that it would then chew in its cheek like a cow to process that yummy plant material. Fossilized stomach content and wear patterns on the teeth suggest a diet of ferns, cycads, palms, and flowering plants, which were widespread during the late Cretaceous period. They stuck to the open floodplains, woodlands, and coastal lowlands in what is now western North America, where the modern states of Montana and Wyoming are, as well as the province of Alberta. This area was amazing at preserving these triceratops, which is why it's one of the most common ceratopsids in the fossil record. Although their social behavior remains debated until we finally get a time machine, the fossil evidence suggests that Triceratops may have lived solitary lives or in small family groups, unlike some other Ceratopians that roamed in large herds like bison. Some fossils have injuries and bite marks, which shows that it was no stranger to predators, possibly even Tyrannosaurus rex, which was also known to frequent the same areas around the same time period. Now that we've looked at the Triceratops, let's get to know Taurosaurus. The Taurosaurus, or perforated lizard, lived in the same region and time period as Triceratops. Like Triceratops, it was a member of the Ceratopsidae family. But to date, in the 10 or so partial fossils that have been excavated, only mature members have been confirmed, although there are some samples that we could not determine the creature's age at the time of fossilization. They were first described in 1891 by the American paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh and his team, with the original fossil being found in Wyoming. And to date, there are less than 10 known specimens, which makes them relatively rare. They also featured an even larger solid bony frill growing from the back of the spine with two fenestrae. These fenestrae, or openings, gave Taurosaurus its name, and were thought to reduce the skull's weight while still allowing it to have an amazing visual display, and or efficient thermal regulation depending on which theory you may subscribe to. Speaking of subscribing, throw one on this episode and we'll do an episode based on that theory. They had incredibly similar facial horns to Triceratops. With the beak and grinding teeth, quadrupedal stance, short front legs, robust muscular build, and a short tail. Taurosaurus was also quite large, measuring around 25 to 30 feet in length. The limited fossils we have lead us to believe that they also weighed around 11 tons, or about as much as an African bush elephant. So as you can see, with the exception of the fenestrae, these dinosaurs are very similar, although there are some more subtle differences as well. So which is your favorite dino, Triceratops or Thorosaurus? Either way, Come check out our merch store where we have t-shirts for both. Maybe get one, maybe get both. Maybe get one for a friend, who knows. But just remember, anything you do purchase helps support the channel and put out great content just like this. For now, let's get back to the topic and compare the anatomy of the Triceratops versus the Taurosaurus. Let's break down the most apparent anatomical distinctions between the two. Triceratops had a short, solid, thick frill, whereas Taurosaurus had a large, thin one with two large holes in it. 
Triceratops had long suborbital and short nasal horns, and Taurosaurus had longer nasal and brow horns. Triceratops had a more robust and compact skull structure, and Taurosaurus had a more elongated and delicate skull structure. Triceratops' bone structure was rougher and denser, which can indicate a younger growth stage, whereas Taurosaurus' bone texture was smoother and more worn in, indicating maturity. So were Triceratops actually a teenage form of Taurosaurus? Let's take a look at the origin of this controversy. The scientific debate began in earnest in 2010. When brilliant paleontologists John Scanella and Jack Horner published in the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology, after studying more than 50 skulls of Triceratops and Taurosaurus. This interesting paper was met with some skepticism when it was first presented at the Society of Vertebrae Paleontology Conference in Bristol, England in 2009. Since, it stimulated a healthy debate between experts, enthusiasts, and even us today. In simplest terms, the hypothesis proposed that Triceratops were simply the juvenile or teenage version of Taurosaurus as it matured, its skull changed shape, forming the fenestrae that define it. Let's take a look at some of the basic facts of Scadella and Horner's hypothesis. Ontogenetic morphing, which implies that Triceratops skulls, as they matured, underwent dramatic changes becoming its Taurosaurus form, with their frills continuing to form as it aged, slowly morphing to include the windows. Although paleontologists have documented how some other ceratopsid skulls undergo dramatic changes as they mature, such as Cosmoceratops, so there is some possibility that the juvenile Triceratops, which have solid frills, later developed holes as they age, creating the skull features found in the Taurosaurus. Based on existing fossil records, we can confirm that the shape, thickness, and curvature of the thrills of Triceratops and Taurosaurus grow over the course of their life cycle. Studies on the skull indicate that some Taurosaurus specimens had growth patterns consistent with old age, while Triceratops specimens displayed mainly juvenile characteristics. Using microscopic analysis of the bone tissue, they were able to see signs of growth stages in the frills over the course of both dinos' lifespans. Triceratop bones tend to show immature, fast-growing structures, while Thorosaurus bones reveal slow-growing, remodeled tissue, consistent with adult maturity. Fossil records have not yielded clear juvenile Taurosaurus specimens or a confirmed and vetted old Triceratops. If Taurosaurus was a separate genus, we would expect to find a wide range of ages in the fossil record. The absence of young Taurosaurus supports the theory that what we call Taurosaurus may simply be the adult form of Triceratops. With fossils of both dinosaurs found in the Hell Creek Formation in Montana and surrounding regions. They also existed over the same period, suggesting the possibility of a single lineage rather than two coexisting species roaming the plains together. Now we have to address the Triceratops in the room. Some paleontologists argue that the difference between the two skulls are too substantial to be explained by age alone. Like how the frills fenestrae are not merely thin spots. They are fully open holes, a trait not typically seen emerging in older individuals of other ceratopsid species. While some Taurosaurus specimens appear mature, we cannot confirm that in some of the other samples, which means that more research is needed to rule out the idea that we already have fossils for juvenile Taurosaurus. Some Triceratops specimens also show some signs of mature bone structures without developing these holes, challenging the growth stage theory. This again does not necessarily make the theory false, but it will require some explanation within the Triceratops story. Which brings us to the next question. If Triceratops transition into Taurosaurus, we would expect to find numerous intermediate forms with partially developed fenestrae. In the current fossil record, there is no evidence of fenestrae gradually forming in Triceratops skulls. While there are some possible candidates, their numbers are not sufficient to confirm the theory decisively or disprove it. This debate is part of a larger challenge in paleontology, distinguishing ontogenetic, age-related changes from genuine taxonomic distinctions. Dinosaurs, like many modern reptiles and birds, went through drastic physical changes as they aged. Juvenile dinosaurs often looked radically different from their adult forms, sometimes even appearing to belong to different species altogether. Just like how it's hard to believe that a small cute baby turned into a mature adult. The triceratops torosaurus debate highlights how much our understanding of dinosaur development continues to evolve. If Triceratops and Taurosaurus are the same, it underscores the importance of ontogenetic studies in revising established taxonomies. Believe it or not, the Triceratops-Taurosaurus debate is not unique. 
Other ceratopsids have prompted questions about age versus species. Nidoceratops, known from a single skull, was once considered its own genus, but is now thought by some to be an intermediate form between Triceratops and Taurosaurus. Pachyronosaurus and Achylosaurus show how frills and horn shapes evolved drastically with age amongst closely related species. So was the Triceratops its own species, or was it a juvenile Taurosaurus? The answer remains elusive, though the evidence leans compellingly in both directions. Most researchers treat Triceratops and Taurosaurus as separate genus, pending further fossil discoveries and refined analytic techniques. With single species theory supporters citing the lack of juvenile Taurosaurus specimens, ontogenetic transformation seen in Ceratopsids' development, bone history data indicating that they were in different life stages, and the majority of skeptics countering with clear anatomical differences that exceed simple age variation, absence of transitional fossils showing gradual frill perforation, and the fact that there may be mature Triceratops fossils lacking Taurosaurus features. Beyond the academic circle, the triceratops taurosaurus debate has captured the imagination of dinosaur enthusiasts worldwide. It challenges our assumptions and reminds us that science is always evolving, just like the dinosaurs themselves. Whether they were one majestic beast growing up, or two different ceratopsids roaming side by side, Triceratops and Taurosaurus remain titans of the Mesozoic, symbol of the Earth's lost grandeur and the enduring quest for knowledge. We hope you really enjoyed this episode, and that you leave your own ideas, concepts, or theories about this in the comments down below. If you like content such as this, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and pound that notification button to make sure that you don't miss any of our future episodes. Holy cow, are you still here? You must really like dinosaurs. Well, if you do, make sure you check out our merch store. Pick yourself up a Triceratops or Taurosaurus t-shirt, or maybe both. Get one for your friend, your mom, your grandma, your sister, your cousin. You know, that weird guy that works at the front of the office. Everybody loves these things, so make sure you grab them, and also remember that it helps support the channel.